Today using Apple Motion, we're gonna create a heat distortion effect for Final Cut Pro. If you're a patron, you'll be able to download this effect right now. First things first, go ahead and open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the product your browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. From there, select the Final Cut effect and you can leave your presets here at whatever you like. Now I'm gonna want an image in here so I can clearly see what my effect is doing. So we'll go ahead and jump into Finder and I'm just gonna drag over this really cool desert image I found on Unsplash. The first thing we wanna do is create a map to tell the image how it should be displaced from the heat. So we'll go ahead and look in our library, find our generators and locate the clouds image. I'm gonna drag that directly into the layers pane. From there, we'll jump into the inspector and we're gonna set our vertical scale all the way down to eight and our horizontal scale as high as it'll go. So 256. After that, we're gonna drag up the speed. This is the evolution speed. So if this is at zero, the clouds aren't going to change at all. However, if I drag that all the way up to two, they'll change a lot. And this is just gonna help improve the effect quite a bit. After that, I'm gonna change the method over to turbulent and that's gonna give us some more contrast. If you want even more contrast in this cloud image, you can actually go to the gradient settings and just drag up the black and white areas as much as you need to get all that contrast happening. Coming down to the offset settings, we'll click this down arrow and locate the Y parameter. I'm going to click this down arrow, add a parameter behavior and select rate. Now we can set this to something like one and if you play through, you'll see how the image is actually moving upwards. As we know, heat rises, so this is really gonna help the effect. What we're gonna do is select our effect source and push K. That is going to create a clone layer, which is essentially a duplicate of the effect source. However, anything that we apply to this effect source will apply also to the clone layer, whereas anything we apply to the clone layer will not affect the effect source. And I'm gonna right click and select Add Image Mask. You can also achieve that with Command Shift M. From there, I'm going to click and drag my clouds down to the image mask. After that, we'll come to the source channel and change it from alpha over to luminant. So now if I disable the effect source, we can actually see how the clouds are bringing through a little bit of that clone image. So this is gonna be really helpful for our effect. I'm gonna go ahead and re-enable the effect source, then selecting the clone layer, we'll go into the filters, go to distortion and select underwater. So if I play through, you can actually see how we're kind of getting these little heat waves moving upward in our image. Now that rate might be going a little bit too fast for me, so I'm gonna just drop that down to something like 0.3, and just like that, we can see all of these heat waves rising in our image. Now, one way we could improve this effect is if we had some slight variations in size. With our clouds, I'm gonna call these displacement one, then I'm going to push Command D to duplicate that. And now we can look at the horizontal and vertical scale. We'll go ahead and drag up the vertical scale a bit. We'll go into the rate settings and maybe drop this down to 0.1. Now I wanna enable it just so we can get a good idea of what this is looking like. And as you can see, we have this nice, really slow rate moving up. It might be a little bit too slow, honestly. So we'll take it up to 0.2 now, just like so. Now that we've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and hide the displacement once again. Let's select our effect source and rather than creating another clone layer, let's try another effect to get this across. So with our effect source selected, we'll go up to the filters, go to distortion, and this time we're gonna select refraction. From there, I'm gonna drag my displacement two over into the well and it's working off of the luminance. So if we play through, we should now see multiple parts of the image being displaced. Let's go ahead and publish some of these parameters over into Final Cut Pro so we can use this as a plugin. So I'm first going to publish the rate of our secondary displacement map. Then I'll go ahead and publish the rate of the first one there. After that, we can go into our underwater settings and publish the size, the speed, and the refraction amount. Then we can jump into the next refraction setting and publish those as well. So now that we have all these parameters published, we can go ahead and push Command S to send it to Final Cut Pro, and we'll just call this Heat Distortion. I'm gonna select the category and throw it into Tutorials and push Publish. Now that I'm in Final Cut Pro, we can see my heat distortion effect is right here. I'll just go ahead and click and drag that onto our video, and you can see how it is distorting the image exactly how we wanted it. So if this video was helpful to you, you might also wanna check out this video where I show you how to create a Pro Mist filter for Final Cut Pro. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.